Hi, I'm Judy Tayabji. Thank you very much for joining us today. Today we're talking about something that actually I think most of us should know more about. I know I like to learn more about it. It's under the heading of health. As you know, we did a program on prostate cancer, we've done one on breast cancer, and we've also covered AIDS. Today we're returning to a subject we brought you a little while ago on hepatitis C, and it's to update you on what's happened in the last few weeks in the wake of the Creever Commission reporting out on the possibility of compensation. We have also with us today the Deputy Provincial Health Officer, and so we'll look at what the province is doing now and uh, some of the things behind the headlines that we've been hearing about. But first, let's take a look at an overview of what our Federal Health Minister, Alan Rock, had to say in the wake of the Creever Commission. This report comprises about a thousand pages. It's more than just a dry clinical history. Because the words on these pages express the views of those thousands of Canadians who were affected by this tragedy. Men and women and children whose futures were forfeited, whose lives were shortened, whose death was hastened, and whose fate could well have been our own had we not simply been more lucky. Their tragedy and indeed their courage has moved all of us. We can't undo the damage. I wish we could. But we can express our profound sadness and our deep regret for the harm done to so many Canadians and their families. We accept the conclusions contained in Mr. Justice Creever's report about the federal role in what happened. We accept those conclusions in their entirety and without reservation. The federal government also accepts its share of responsibility for past shortcomings in the system. We are sorry for all that has happened. I can tell you today we're creating a Canadian Blood Safety Council. The council will include members from the scientific and the medical and consumer groups. It will act as a watchdog as the federal government moves forward in implementing the recommendations in this report and regulating the blood supply in Canada. Let me conclude by saying that Mr. Justice Creever's report is now being assessed in detail by officials in both the federal and provincial governments. We are determined that this report will not simply gather dust. You should be aware that what we're talking about is people who've been infected by hepatitis C because of tainted blood. That's what he was referring to with respect to the Creever Commission. There are also people who've contracted it in other ways. So we'll talk about hepatitis C in general and also what the province and the federal government may do in the future with respect to compensation. We'll be back after a quick break with your calls to this number. The number one brand of non-stick cookware is about to change cooking with this exclusive anti-warping stainless steel disc. This is Armorel. Inside, Armorel's new granite texture is even more scratch resistant. The result, a non-stick pan designed to last even longer, both on the inside and on the outside. Armorel from Tefal. Available at Canadian Tire, major department stores and most other fine houseware retailers in Canada. I'm never at home. Why would I leave my phone there? What do you get with Amigo Digital? Every month you get 100 anytime minutes and 100 first incoming minutes free. Yeah, I'm free. Free. You get call display. Staying in touch doesn't mean staying in. And oh yeah, there's no long-term contract. I call shots. And you get it all for just $19.95 a month. Amigo Digital. It goes with you. Everybody loves peak cream cookies. My personal favorite are the fruit cream ones. You eat around the cookie, then have the middle part for the last. Christmas time, it's just perfect. Any, any celebration. Island Farms has taken that all over, and anything that they make has got to be good. The science in the aisle for you. 
Vancouver Island's homegrown food store. Your telephone and Pacific Coast Savings MemberLink Touchtone phone banking. Put them together and you get 24-hour banking convenience. MemberLink gives you access to information on your accounts, lets you pay bills, and transfer funds from one account to another. And with MemberLink, you can access your account from any Touchtone phone. You can even use your cellular. MemberLink, from Pacific Coast Savings. Touchtone phone banking convenience, 24 hours a day. And hepatitis C is something that many of us don't know about, but if we do know about it, then I'm sure we're quite concerned about what the government may be doing and how it's going to be affecting people's personal lives. And we're going to talk about what the government may plan to do and how we can perhaps participate in that. We have three guests with us today. Some of you will remember Dave Smith from the last time we did a show on hepatitis C. So thanks for coming back. Thank you. Now, Leslie, it's Gibbonhawk. Yep. That's a, that's a very uh, rhythmic name, Gibbonhawk. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and Leslie's from Penticton. She's the vice president of the Hepatitis C Society of Canada. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we also have with us Dr. Sean Peck. He's the deputy provincial health officer. Some of you will remember Dr. John Miller, who joined us a while ago to talk about the annual report. And I'm really glad you could join us to give us your perspective. Pleasure. I actually want to start with you in terms of talking about what's happening. Um, why don't you tell us, first of all, for those who didn't join us last time on Hepatitis C, what is it? Well, let's just uh, back up and say what hepatitis C is. Uh, hepatitis C is the third of the hepatitis viruses w that we know about. Hepatitis A. A, B, A, is, yeah. A is the one that you get from uh, food, food handlers, possibly, and in, in pass from person to person. B is uh, from blood and also from uh, body fluids. And C is similarly blood and body fluids. It's, very, it's quite easily transmitted by blood, actually. Um, hepatitis C is. It, 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 yes, and mm -hmm. it, it causes, after a long period of incubation, mm -hmm. it causes uh, uh, liver damage. But during that up to 20 years or so, people do have some inflammation of the liver and they can have nonspecific symptoms. Mm -hmm. Eventually, about 20% uh, of people get cirrhosis of the liver and about 1, or f one to 5% actually get cancer of the liver. Uh, and incidentally, it affects about 1% of the population in British Columbia. That's like fairly about significant. About 38,000 people yeah. have uh, potentially uh, got infected with hepatitis C. During that incubation period, can you find it in a blood test? Uh, you c yes, okay. you can. They will have antibody tests which are positive. But the point is, they only discovered the virus in about 1990. Right. And, uh, Therefore, we, we, have, we still don't know the natural history of the disease. We know a lot of people who got infected 20 years ago and now are getting sick. And okay. I think some people here, may be able, you may be able to tell some of the stories right. around what actually happens to people who even acquired the virus a long time ago. <clears throat> okay, I want to bring Leslie into this, and we'll, we'll talk about the province's role as, as the show progresses. But Leslie, you were part of the lockup for the Creever Commission, which means this 1,100-page document. You were one of the people who had a chance to examine it ahead of time. What are the implications, first of all, for those whose families may be affected, and secondly, for those of us who are fortunate enough not to have an effect but would certainly care about people who do? I think the biggest thing that came out of it was that this new blood supply system has to be cleaner. It has to, um, there has to be dollars set aside for research and education um, of whatever the budget of the, of the, health, the new blood supply system is. And... Um, also that, that compensation was being recommended to the people who received tainted blood through transfusions. Right. Okay. Well, those are fairly significant. Um, now, Dave, you were on last time, and uh, this was something that we spent some time on, and we certainly had a huge response from the public on that. What kind of follow-up did you have? Um, we're getting an average of six to ten phone calls a day from extremely distressed people who, um, whose lives are um, uh, in the process of being torn and tattered by this. And uh, so we really need to um, um, take another step further in uh, developing some kind of strategies to um, better deliver some kind of um, service to, to these people. Okay. And I know that later in the show we'll give you some idea of how you can get more information. And also, at the end of the show, the provincial hotline for hepatitis C. We're going to take a couple of phone calls and then uh, an information package. But we'll, uh, we'll start by talking to Anne in Victoria. Actually, yeah. you just covered what my question was going to be about. Uh -huh. um, my neighbor contracted hepatitis C during the early 80s when her daughter was born and because of a blood transfusion. She's distressed. She's a single mother of four children, and I would like to know how she can get help because this is ridiculous. This 
she's living day to day being sick. Okay, well, I, I'm, I'm actually glad you asked that, even though we talked in generalities. Um, Dr. Peck, some time ago, I think it was in the spring of this year, the health minister sent out a letter to people saying you should go get tested because you may have contracted hepatitis C. I haven't heard much of the follow-up. I see there's a little bit of information you've given us, but can you give us an idea in the case of the, of the caller, a friend who's a single mom with four kids? Is, yeah. Is there a plan? Uh, w w BC had a very comprehensive campaign uh, of which um, sending letters to all those who were transfused between uh, January 1990, sorry, January 1985 to June 1990. Right. Um, and we sent out altogether, uh, well, it's going to be nearly 70,000 letters now. It was 52,000 in the first round, and there's another 15,000 plus to be, have just been sent out a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, we had a, a lot of public advertising about hepatitis C, right. advising anybody, even before 1985, who had a blood transfusion, that they should get a test for hepatitis C. Okay. Uh, we also sent an information package out to all the physicians to raise their awareness of the treatment of hepatitis C, and we've set up this hotline at BC Centre for Disease Control so that people can get more information about it. Okay, no, but in a case like this where you've got someone who knows that they have it and they're sick, is there going to be some sort of program to provide support? Well, I mean, first of all, uh, we've got a, a good medical care system. People will need to have their own family doctor, mm -hmm. but then they need to get linked to somebody who specializes in hepatitis. And there are uh, centers of excellence uh, in the province where people will get referred for the best treatment that, that is available. And the doctor can help them with that? Yeah. Okay. We'll take another call just before the info package. Let's talk to Heather in Nanaimo. Hi, Heather. Hello, Judy. Hi. I was listening to the program last time you had hepatitis on. I um, yeah. contracted it in, uh, actually, I don't know when I contracted it. Right. But. Uh, Did you ever have blood work done at all? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I'm an, okay. an ex user. Okay. And I was diagnosed with it a year ago. Right. Um, I've never had any ill effects of the disease, but what I would like to know is when is the PCR test going to be available, I believe it's called? Okay. A PCR? Right. Okay. That's a good question. That's um, one of the more detailed tests, I guess. For yes. Yeah. Um, I think we're doing... No, I'm, I'm not sure that it is available at the moment. We're doing a confirmatory test at the moment. I'm afraid I'm not a laboratory person. I can't tell you the exact detail. What's a confirmatory test? Well, it's... Do you know? You're, you're when, nodding? Okay. When you first yeah. do, do a test, you may get some false positives and you do a, need to do a confirmatory test to make sure that people really are positive. Oh, I see. So in the first, actually from 85 for the first year or two, we may have been identified people who truly were not positive. Oh, that's kind of scary. And they need to get retested to make sure mm -hmm. they really are positive. Okay. We're just going to provide a little bit of background on what's been happening in hepatitis C and then uh, we'll take more of your calls to our guests. But uh, the Creever report, which as we saw in our story... Uh, was on this issue, says victims of tainted blood should be compensated without having to go to court or to prove fault. The new national system is needed for the collection and delivery of blood products, and this new agency must be regularly audited. Mr. Justice Creever does lay some blame on, blame on the provinces as well. He says they waited too long to pay for tests that would have properly screened blood. Earlier estimates that 12,000 Canadians had been infected with hepatitis C were revised upward in the Creever report which says that as many as 28,600 people were infected with hepatitis C between 1986 and 1990 alone. And up to 20% of those people who are infected are expected to die. The Hepatitis C Society of Canada calculates a compensation package could run as high as $2 billion for hepatitis C victims. Ottawa says it will pay part of that, but the provinces must also agree to participate in costs. There's been a program in BC to check back on those who may have been infected. 52,000 people in the province were warned they should be tested, uh, or 70,000 we may have heard, and these are people who received blood products between 1985 and 1990. And so far, 1,000 of those have reported back that they tested positive, and that equals 3.4% of those tested, higher than the 2% that was forecast earlier. And it does seem that this is something that... Uh, maybe we need to be more concerned about than we did. That was uh, one thing that you raised last time you were on, Dave, is that uh, it may be more prevalent than what people are talking about. Yes, uh, those figures have been revised upwards, and uh, I think um, we're going to see them uh, continue to rise as, uh, as uh, this progresses. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's take a call from Sean in Victoria. Hi, Sean. Hi. Hi, go ahead. Uh, I'm wondering uh, what uh, kind of compensation would be offered in terms of the... Uh, 
the cost of long-term health care. In 10, 15 years, these people are going to need home nurses, and as all we know, we all know that's not provided under right. medical insurance. So I think that should be addressed as well as a compensation package okay. of monetary value. Okay, well, thank you for that. Um, now, Lizzie, you, you're someone who's very familiar with the sort of current discussion. Uh, is there some discussion of caregivers as well? I mean, right now, I'm sure there are a lot of people watching who say, I can't get a caregiver now. I am know? a caregiver, so I oh, can speak go. to that okay. issue. I have a nine-year-old that's infected with the disease. So and, tell, tell uh, it, that's your son. Yeah, Jared. Um, for what Creever's recommendation um, on, I got the exact page marked, right. because um, he actually does address the fact that caregivers need to be compensated for caring for the sick right. um, throughout. And for me, I would say it would be very difficult to put a dollar figure, how much did Jared lose by not working? He hasn't ever worked in his life. Right. Um, so for me, it's important because I have not been able to work. I have had to care for him or to pay someone to do it, and, and I've chosen to stay home and look after myself. So. so your son is nine and he has hepatitis C? Yeah. How long has he had it? He was transfused when he was eight weeks of age. Oh, I So see. he was just a tiny little baby. Um, he had open heart surgery. Right. And um, he's been sick ever since. We've been to over 400 medical appointments to try and find out wow. what was wrong with him and finally got diagnosis in June of 1995. Uh, when we found out he had hep C. So it kind of was almost like a welcome relief because we had an answer to what had and been going on for so long. And now we know how what we have to deal with and, and that it's a chronic illness that we're going to have to learn to deal with as a family. So Right. Okay. I just want to correct one thing from the caller. They said that home nursing care is not covered, but it is. I mean, we do have a universal home nursing care program throughout the province. It depends how you can qualify for coverage. We've done some programs on that. I've, I've heard from a lot of people who say they have trouble getting it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, it's true that only if there's a certain severity of uh, illness yeah. and a real need for nursing care. Maybe off the air I'll tell you some of the cases we heard about. But uh, anyway, we'll try to take another call. We'll talk to Kevin in Abbotsford. Hi, Kevin. Hi there. Hi, go ahead. Um, first of all, I want to just uh, thank you personally, Judy, for uh, paying so much attention to this issue. You're welcome. And I want to thank everybody on the panel uh, for all they've done. Right. I just want to um, make a statement, uh, something that uh, Mr. Smith had uh, talked about. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my wife and my family, uh, we, we split up over the last month, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of it had to do with that. And it, I mean, things were going really well for us, and then we got hit with this, and uh, right. it was uh, it was a, it was a blower, that's for sure. Right. And uh, so you know, you, we're yeah. trying to put our lives back together again, but we just needed some time away from each other. Right. So I can deal with my problem, you know. Okay. Well, that's a, I'm sure that Dave will actually relate to that story, actually, because I think you had some similar experiences. Yes, I did. It can be very stressful for families. It's very stressful, okay. and uh, we get. Uh, we get very similar stories every single day. Now, in a case like that, people. though, he says he has to deal with his problem, but it doesn't seem like it should be his problem, really. I mean, you know, if you contract a disease, it should be the problem of all the people who care about you. There are so many variables with this. Um, you just cannot uh, fully understand um, what the person is going through, and you can't fully understand what the family is going through okay. either. And in a lot of enough. cases, you can't get accurate information from your doctor, so that's the scariest part when people are told, oh, it's no big deal, you know, get on with your life. Well, I'm concerned about, you know, doesn't diet have an effect on your liver or whatever? And, oh, no, no, just, you know, get on with it. And that, that's the, the probably the most prevalent questions that we get um, as individuals giving um, advice or, or talking to people who are finding out they're newly infected right. is to try and, and, and get some kind of a, a semblance of, of order that they can put to their lives now that they know because what you need to do first and foremost is take care of yourself and what we find is for the most part people actually get healthier when they find out they're infected because yeah, they start, they start looking better. after themselves <laughs> and understanding it's your liver is your you know your one and only liver right and the only other option is transplantation isn't really an option for a lot right. of people I see Dr. Peck nodding about taking care of yourself that's mm -hmm. a big yeah. part of it yeah, yeah. well I, I would actually like to praise the hepatitis <coughs> C survivors because you see in, in many diseases, we find that when people come together who've got the same complaint, they actually can be advocates and help right. each other get the best care that there is. Because, right. you know, 
a family doctor can be in their office and they can be dealing with multiple conditions. And we mm -hmm. can't guarantee that every physician well, yeah, is totally up to date. Well, yeah, everything. And, yeah, but, right. but if you've got a, a, an advocacy group, and we have it for, you know, for uh, uh, um, CNIB, for sure. blindness, cancer. for uh, yeah. cancer, yeah. diabetes, um, you name it. There are many, many disease groups, but it, it's a very important thing for people to okay. be able to share information with each other. And they actually advocate for better treatment. Yeah. And, and it's, in, it's very important that we take a break. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back and we'll talk more about that and take more of your calls after the break. Tayab She is brought to you in part by Metro Lexus Toyota, leaders in customer satisfaction. Call to order Rogers Me TV now and you could win a trip to historic England. I'm so into history. Or one of 10 Sony home theaters. There's over $300,000 in prizes, including a grand prize of 50,000. The earlier you enter, the more chances to win. And with 16 channels for as little as $5.99, you can't lose. Order MeTV today to win. Call 1-888-ROGERS-1. This holiday only at Eden's. Choose Poem or Tresor and receive free this four-piece Lancome bonus with lipstick and refillable spray. Eat at your store. Eat at this holiday from Eden's. Experience the sense of Calvin Klein with this five-piece gift set. One for men, one for women. Yours for only $40. Santa is in the building, seven days a week from now till Christmas. Get photos with Santa, get your gifts wrapped, and take advantage of Woodgrove's extended holiday hours. There's more sounds of Christmas at Woodgrove Center. We'll share the joys of the season. It's Christmas time and more at Woodgrove Center. Quality stands the test of time. Now blend new country furniture with fine antiques from Cobble Hill Country Furnishings. Select from unique pieces. Complement your purchase with country furniture, made to stand the test of time. Fine antiques and fine country furniture are on display at our show home or visit our store. Cobble Hill Country Furnishings, timeless furniture for your home, inside and Cobble out. Cobble Hill Country Furnishings, tomorrow's news today. Today, a Hepatitis C update. Our guests are Dr. Sean Peck, the Deputy Provincial Health Officer. Dave Smith is the Chair of the Hepatitis C Society of Canada, Victoria Chapter. And Leslie Gibbonhut is the Vice President for the Hepatitis C Society of Canada, Canada, <laughs> out of Penticton. And I actually would like to mention right now that Leslie is here because of some assistance from Rick Thorpe, who is the Liberal MLA for Okanagan Penticton, and he should be given credit for supporting you enough to basically make sure you could be here. So thanks, Rick. And uh, we'll go to the phones and start with Kathy in Vancouver. Hi, Kathy. Hi, how are you? Fine, thanks. Yeah, I was just informed a couple of months ago. Um, I've had a high liver count for several years, and I was not an IV drug user, and I did not, to my knowledge, have um, an intravenous drug or inter intravenous blood. Right. And um, I, I'm just overwhelmed with finding out that I have it. And I just don't know what to do. I try to get information. It's really hard. Right. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for, for calling. And, and I guess that would be really tough if, if you suddenly found out you had it. Um, what would be a suggestion? I mean, you were talking about how good the support groups are, Dave. I think probably the first thing would be to phone the 1-800 number, and we can give it out over the air. It'll be coming up at the end of the segment, I think. And uh, they will direct uh, her to you to... Um, um, your local chapter, and I'm not sure what's happening in Vancouver right now, but uh, they can direct you to me, and then I can direct, I can help you out from here. So now, both of you have described though that once you find out that either you have it or that your son has it, that that's when you start to be able to build from there. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, even though she's really upset right now, that she can, you know, progress to a better place. Um, yes, I've seen it time and time again. Uh, once people take hold of um, the information and start doing something about it, uh, um, it can get better. And in my own case, uh, 
I went about as far as you can go with this. I was on my deathbed and I received a liver transplant two and a half years ago and uh, I'm quite healthy and active now. So okay. uh, that is not to say that you're going to need a liver transplant. but You're just saying there are ways to, yes. to deal with it. Okay. Let's talk to Judith in Victoria. Hi, Judith. Oh, hi. hi. First, Merry Christmas for all of you. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, my question is, uh, is federal or a provincial government have any help for uh, to pay our medical bills like i have one infection to other one like uh, this year i have four kidney infection last year on my chest like now just recovering uh, you know the again a head and my chest infection right i mean cost a fortune and our seems to be we not having any help at all to pay our bill beside all those vitamins okay well well thank you for that question um well I, I think i'd like to just mention that I mean, all hospital care is available, people, physician care is available, laboratory testing. There are a few little gaps, like uh, nobody's quite figured out how to pay for the huge costs of the drugs for this, hepatitis yeah. C at this time. Right. Um, and uh, things like home care, okay, the, it's only for people who are quite severely ill. So there are a few little gaps for many conditions yeah. but in, for, in our for, healthcare system, but we do have a very comprehensive healthcare system. But I don't think you need to apologize for a healthcare system, but I think when you, it's easy to say a few little gaps, but uh, we do have heard from people who say if they're on a fixed income and they're very poor, then those little gaps become really significant in their lives. Um, is there any talk of the possibility of a policy change where those little gaps are filled in? Well, we have to think about it for all, all health conditions as well as hepatitis C. I mean, clearly it may be part of the debate about what whether compensation is is provided or not right. about the comprehensiveness of care but I think we have to also recognize that in our look back we're only going to get uh, identify about 1500 people and they're estimated to be 38,000 people in the province who've got hepatitis C so mm -hmm. it's it's got to be looked at uh, uh, of all so. conditions and so yeah. uh, whether you make those 1500 people a special group that yeah. get extra benefits compared to else in some ways that could be considered unfair well, okay, this is a very big debate, I can see. I just wanted to ask you if you had anything to add based on the lockup or the Creever Commission and the possible compensation package. Uh, no, because we don't know what it's, I mean, there's not details about what it's going to end up being. Okay. But I did have one thing to add about um, looking after yourself. Milk thistle is one thing that works for a lot of people. And it's a herbal remedy. And it's What is it? It's called milk thistle. Milk thistle. It helps the liver to rejuvenate itself, and a lot of people find it just helps them feel better. Okay. It's not covered, and it, for so many people, they just simply can't afford to even help themselves with that one, and right. that's important. Well, we won't all beat up on Dr. Peck at once. <laughs> we'll be, we have to take a quick break. We'll try to get us. Oh, actually, uh, this is where we show you information on the Hepatitis Society. And so Hepatitis C Society of Canada, the Victoria chapter, is 1611 Quadra Street, Victoria, B.C., V8W 2L5, and the phone number is 250-388-4311. And if you would like to contact the Hepatitis C Society of Canada, their care of 383 Huron Street, Toronto, Ontario, M5S 2G5, you can phone them at 416-979-5855. You can also call a 1-800 line, and this would be a, a good idea, 1-800-652-HEP-C. Hep C, and that's 1-800-652-4372. Uh, and you can email them at hecss at idirect.com. And as I said earlier at the end of the program, we'll also give you the 1-800 number, which is the provincial hotline. Hopefully you have your pen and your paper right by the phone uh, right now or right by the TV. We're going to take a quick break. We'll try to get as many calls in as possible in the next segment. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. How's L.A.? <laughs> yeah, they do that there. Yeah, the place is looking fine. Pretty empty, though. Any chance you could hop on a plane? Be here for Christmas? Yeah. Yeah, I miss you, too. Uh, there's someone at the door. This holiday only at Eden's. Choose Poem or Tresor and receive free this four-piece Lancome bonus with lipstick and refillable spray.
This holiday from Eaton's. Experience the sense of Calvin Klein with this five-piece gift set. One for men, one for women. Yours for only $40. a new addition to the family. Oh, just beautiful. Got ABS oh. brakes, easier access than ever, side door impact beam, 40 standard safety features, and it's got a five-star rating and front-end crash test. And right now, Windstar comes with an all-star deal with our new 98 model and only $249 a month, but only at your BC Ford and Mercury dealer and only for a limited time. And how about that gorgeous little baby? He likes it too. Add pizzazz to your home, originality to your gifts, and pick up something unique for yourself. Where can you do all of this? The Whipple Tree General Store. Whipple Tree carries Vancouver Island's largest selection of rattan and wicker furniture, and their gift selection is second to none. Exciting, original, and enjoyable. That's the Whipple Tree General Store. When you see our truck in your neighborhood, you know someone has just bought quality from the Whipple Tree General Store. Just south of Duncan on the Trans-Canada. Oh, oh, okay. I'm just learning a little bit more during the break here on, on Hepatitis C. We'll try to get as many calls in as, as we can. I know there's a lot of people who want to talk to you. Um, let's start with Rose in Nanaimo. Hi, oh, Rose. Hi, hi, how are you? Fine, thanks. Go ahead. Good. I, I've got a couple of questions. Um, as a foster parent, we're, we deal with high-risk children that have been um, coming from backgrounds that could uh, expose them to Hepatitis C. Right. And what I wanted to know is maybe Dr. Peck could help us out. Um, a couple of questions. What do we need, to, like if a child um, tests negative at the time, an infant, um, someone had said that the antibodies or something from the mother um, could still be with them, and therefore they may test negative at birth, but perhaps 18 months down the road they could test positive? Okay. Um, I'll 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 yeah, go ahead. Also, um, what are the, um, the possibilities or the risks um, as a foster parent, when we're dealing with um, infants, newborn infants, or say up to uh, 18 months of age. Okay. And, uh, all, and the third one, <laughs> sorry, the third one is, if we get the hepatitis series, the three shots, um, does that protect us against us for life? Okay, well those are, are very good questions. Mm -hmm. um, okay, the first one about the antibodies. I, I, it's actually the other way around. If at birth a baby may have antibodies from the mother, which will then disappear, and that will show that the baby's not infected with the hepatitis virus. Oh, I the, see. The second one uh, was about um, uh, prevention of exposure. Well, what kind of risk do you uh, have there uh, I mean, people should always treat blood and body fluids. It's just the same prevention as for HIV, in effect. Blood and body fluids. Uh, should always be treated as potentially infectious and people should get advice if they have been exposed to, to blood and body fluids particularly if it gets injected into the skin or something like that like a needle stick injury but if a, if a child abrades their knee or something if the knee is bleeding and you and you go to bandage it I mean should you immediately rush and wash your hands is it something we have to be that concerned yes about? any exposure to blood yeah. should be treated okay. uh, seriously wear rubber gloves okay. uh, wash it off and everything uh, thirdly um, there is no vaccine for hepatitis C at the moment. The hepatitis B vaccine, though, is a preventive measure, and it is recommended for people who have acquired hepatitis C in case they got that other virus that could damage the liver. Okay. All right. So, uh, and where do you get information on that? The health unit, your local health unit? The local unit? health unit can provide information about the hepatitis B vaccine. B, okay. And uh, let's talk to Rob now in Victoria. Hi, Rob. Hello. Hi. Hi, Dave. Uh, Sorry, I missed the Wednesday meeting. Um, I have one question here. Well, it's important to have this kind of personal conversation on the air. <laughs> I'm uh, interested in why, if this is such a crisis, that I have been sent to the wrong hospitals. Nobody knows a thing about hepatitis C. Right. I went for interferon injection uh, the other day. I was sent to the wrong hospital, having phoned the right hospital. They directed me to Vic General. I went to Vic General. Vic General sent me back to the original hospital. Nobody there knows anything about this interferon, injections, hep C, right. a thing. Why isn't this being amalgamated from the hospital? Okay, I think that's a, a very a good question. And you'd mentioned as well about the information campaign that you felt you need to do with some of the yeah. medical staff. Well, I, I'm not aware. That's something that has to be addressed with the local health authorities. Well, in his specific example, yeah. even if we leave that aside, yeah. um, are there attempts to talk more with medical professionals about hepatitis C? 
Well, it's been included in a, in a lot of educational programs, and of course we have sent the information out to all physicians. Right. But I think there's still a need to keep raising people's awareness. I mean, certainly our office gives out things to physicians. And on the internet you can actually get a very good information about uh, hepatitis C. Anybody can get as good information as any physician can. Okay. And Leslie, in your experience dealing with your son, have you found that there's a growing awareness of, of the issues and the problems and the services on the medical side over the last few years? Uh, no. Oh, okay. So <laughs> there's, there's still there, a lot of work to do. Yeah, we have an awful lot of work ahead of us. And, and I think it's coming. You know, it, people are starting to pay attention and, and we're starting to do shows like this and, and get around the the province and talk to other people that are infected. It's, it's tough actually to do a show like this because you have no idea. I mean, you get the information, you go, I don't know. But, <laughs> but anyway, you guys are, are teaching us. So let's start uh, talking to Heather in Langley. Hi, Heather. Are you there? Okay, Heather in Langley. Then we'll talk to Joan in Vancouver. Hello. Hi, go ahead. Um, my, I have uh, hepatitis C mm -hmm. and I contacted it while I was in the hospital. Okay. And uh, I've had bypass surgery, a number of heart problems. I'm a senior. Right. And I've been in the hepatitis C liver clinic in Vancouver. Right. So I've been on the Intron. That's it. That's so far, that's my treatment. I can't handle it because I have the heart disease. Okay. So I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. Okay. The part I would like to express, if, if that is the only help for hepatitis C, I'm wondering how the governments and all the people involved feel that we as a senior can pay for Intron for three vials, right. like nearly $500. Wow. Okay, well, that's And then before you had your 600 deductible, you right. had nothing off of that. Wow, okay. So I can tell you yeah. I'm not giving my home up for hepatitis C. Oh, I see. Okay. So I'm, you know, I'd really like to stress that they know how expensive it is to have this disease. How long did the three vials last you? I take um, three shots a week. That's one. So it's three weeks. Three weeks. Okay, well, thank you very much for that. Well, I would highly recommend that she talk to her physician about whether she cannot get it approved on Pharmacare. It has to, it has, to have a special Pharmacare approval but okay. it can be made available on Pharmacare. Okay. And there's also, Sharon's got a commitment to care number that's a 1-800 number included in all the intron boxes that people can call and if they truly cannot afford it, Sharon provides it free of charge. Sh who does? Sharon Canada, it's a drug company that makes... Oh, I see, the, intron. The, 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 the product. product. Okay, so, the, so the, that 1-800 number is inside the box. Yep. And the other one, as you say, she should go talk to her doctor and see mm -hmm. if she can get the And doctors know about that this commitment to care is also there too. Okay. Uh, people need to, to know it's there for them. All right, we have to take a quick break. We'll be back with more of your calls. When you order the new cable package, you could win daily prizes, like great vacations, Sony home theaters and TVs, prize draws of $10,000 and a grand prize of $50,000, plus a daily cash bonus of $1,000 if your name appears when you're watching Teletoon, Space, Home and Garden Canada, The Comedy Network, Outdoor Life, or History Television. Order the new cable package now. Turn on, tune in, and win. Did everybody forget how to set hair? Well, steam in some style with Conair's Curl Care. Gentle, velvety rollers, moisturizing mists take you from no style to soft, sexy, lasting style. Nobody sets style like Con Air. Jumbo Metrics by Con Air, the ultimate styling tool for every new fashion trend in hair. With enough attachments to crimp, straighten, and curl, including a brush for softer effect or a smoother look. It's a mini salon in one. Da, 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 da. You show me yours. You show me. Show me a Tommy! Tommy, the real American fragrance from Tommy Hilfiger. Signature sweatshirt and Tommy Cologne set. $140 value for $89. Change the world. One way at a time. When you give to United Way, you change the world for 100,000 people in Greater Victoria. 
through over 40 community service agencies. If we really want to make the world better, there's always a way. Give at your workplace or call 385-6708. And we're talking about hepatitis C, and we'll go straight back to the phones and see how many people we can talk to. We'll start with Sarah in Gibsons. Uh, Hi, Sarah. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, well, I contracted hepatitis C through a surgery after being stabbed in Alberta 10 years ago. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, and I'm in um, BC now, and I've been here for three years, but nobody wants to touch me. Human resources, disability, nobody. Um, and I have a lot of other medical conditions that require that I be on these programs because I'm unable to care for myself. Um, the thing I'm, I'm, I'm really upset about is what, what the doctor was starting to say is that um, he thinks that the province should have to be able to look at all diseases and all conditions and, and divvy out compensation and, and, and help fairly, but the province was wrong. Alberta was wrong. All these different provinces were wrong. And I'm suffering. I'm here. I'm right now. I'm 25. And I'm just supposed to be in the problem of my life, but I can't even get out of bed. Okay, I'm going to let the doctor uh, respond to that because there seems to be a lot of uh, information circulating about yeah, well, what's happening. What I meant by saying that we have to treat hepatitis C like we treat every other disease, I didn't mean about compensation. What I meant about is our healthcare treatment system. We recognize there are some, some gaps in the healthcare system. You're talking about if there's a prescription cost that you can't say, well, we'll cover hepatitis C prescriptions and only those. Is that what you're talking well, about? Well, uh, there are many drugs coming down the pipe, so to speak, of, of extreme high cost, which have to be considered about whether they're going to be pharmacare eligible and uh, whether there isn't some cheaper alternative. But I know for sure that if people price. need uh, interferon, for instance, that they can get special permission to get it from pharmacare if the doctor recommends it. Okay. I thought interferon was for cancer. It is. And hepatitis C. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that would, that's a pretty heavy-duty drug, apparently. So, Okay, let's talk to uh, Joe in Surrey now. Hi, Joe. Hi, Judy. Hi, go ahead. Um, I was wondering, um, Sean Peck there, mm -hmm. is he the right person to make decisions or are the government employees or whoever work, makes the decisions uh, what to pay for and what not to pay for, are they the right people in the right place or are they not? And another thing is, like recently, I don't, I'm not quite familiar with what uh, disease my grandma was hit with, but she was given 14 days to live by uh, one of the doctors in uh, Prince George. Okay. And one in Vancouver at VGH. And uh, obviously she wanted to visit her uh, homeland before she passed away. Right. And uh, within, within that 14 days, when she got there to her homeland, she had about 10 days to go. Right. And uh, she came back, and she is still alive after having 200 not dollars, 200 rupees worth of medicine. What? Do you have the right medicine in Canada, or do you have any science? If you do, does it work? Okay. Or I think, sh should those people yeah. that are making decisions, or should they be put on the same plans as the rest of the public is? Okay, well, let me ask those questions then. Um, now, when he's asking, are you the right person, I, maybe he's asking if you have the authority to make those decisions. Well, first of all, I, I don't make the decisions about the big decisions, they're, they're political decisions that have to be the made, particularly, make, particularly yes. where they involved a lot of additional money uh, expenditure by the health care budget, which now, is a finite budget. The Minister of Health right now is talking with other Ministers of Health. Our Minister of Health, Joy McPhail, is talking to the Federal Minister of Health and the other Ministers of Health, and they're going to make those big decisions, and then you implement them. Is that right? Um, no, I won't even be implementing them. The, the, the big decision about the compensation will be discussed at a federal provincial meeting sometime in January okay. uh, between the federal and the, all the provincial uh, ministers uh, to follow up on what Kriva's recommendations is. So that's one thing. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm really an advisor to the Ministry of Health about, uh, and what I tend to advise people is do the things that are effective. Right. Uh, uh, and, and in his when there is not evidence for effectiveness, yeah. I I'm hesitant to recommend them for new expenditures. Okay, and just and something to ask you this, though. It does appear that there's a very strong um, uh, inclination toward uh, the pharmaceutical drugs that can be quite expensive, and some people have said about, you know, alternate methods that are not very expensive, that are diet-related, that are herbal-related, that are naturopathically-related. Um, do you give advice of that nature as well? We, we, if, if somebody raises, should a particular substance be um, paid for, Right. out of pharmacare or whatever. What happens is that people then look, is there any, what's the evidence in terms of 
people having a group of people being treated and not treated, and whether this, these people have got better and these people haven't got better. Yes. And that sort of but, but there are all sorts of uh, what I would call alternative medicine things out there, which people tend to go to when they've got chronic conditions which the medical care system hasn't got an easy answer for. Mm -hmm. And I acknowledge that many people try these things, but it's a very difficult decision for people to make to decide whether they should be part of the insured system, particularly if people can't pr produce evidence that they're effective. Okay, well, we'll, we'll talk about that <coughs> further oh, another day, turn? I think. Yeah, it's your turn now, Talk right now, Debbie. Right. <laughs> Here yeah. I am. Yeah, you're on the air. Oh, hi. Yeah, hi, go ahead. Um, I want to say hi to Leslie. I haven't talked to her in a couple of years, but we have talked. In Duncan? Uh, yeah. Uh, my son also has um, hep C. He was diagnosed three and a half years ago. Okay. He's had four open heart surgeries also. How old is he? He's 14 now. Um, I agree with her. Illness is an ongoing issue in, in my life also. Right. Unable to work. Um, my son spends more time at home and in the hospital ill than he does in school. Right. Um, now, the last couple of months, we've been battling with kidney problems, um, infections, and vomiting with blood. Now, could this possibly be part of it? Okay. Well, that's a, a good question. And you're both nodding. Mm -hmm. um, who wants to take that one? Um, I, um, I think that... Um, um, uh, vomiting with blood is a very serious issue. I think, uh, in my own personal situation, uh, that's um, that's what happened with me. So I would suggest that um, that be addressed. Now how did you address it? Um, well, I I lost control um, of uh, addressing it on my own after it happened because uh, I had what's called an esophageal bleed. Right. And uh, that's when I discovered that I had hepatitis C. Okay. And uh, two and a half years later, I had a transplant. Okay, so, so in her case, uh, maybe if she gives a, a call to the society, she can get a little more. And it may not be that. I'm not saying no, that that's, that's right. what it is. I'm right. not. I'm not uh, able to give medical advice. No, but, right. Um, it is. It the thing is, when your liver is taxed, it and not working properly, and not doing what it's supposed to be doing, it does affect all of the organs in your body, and it can be the thing that's affecting um, her son, and uh, something definitely to get checked out. Okay, we have to take another break, and we'll be right back. To help with your Christmas shopping this Saturday and Sunday, almost anything that fits into this Eden's bag is 25% off. And if it doesn't fit, it's 15% off. Merry Christmas from Eaton's. Been watching the free preview of the new cable package? Maybe tasted a little adventure with Outdoor Life Network. Shared some family time with Family Channel. Scrub, scrub and had a break from reality with Teletoon, the animation station. Just three of the many channels in the new cable package. The free preview ends soon. To order, call one 591 1997 You could win great prizes, so turn on, tune in, and enjoy. Melvin Udall has only two problems in life. Melvin, wait! Shut up, kid! Human beings. How do you write women so well? I think of a man. And I take away reason and accountability. And being human. You want to dance? Well, I've been thinking about that. And? No. <laughs> Jack Nicholson. Don't you be like me. You stay just the way you are. As good as it gets. Special sneak preview Saturday night. Whoa! There's a blizzard coming your way. It's the famous Dairy Queen blizzard flavor treat. And it's free. Because right now, when you purchase any super value meal at participating Dairy Queen stores, it comes with a free blizzard. Imagine any 12-ounce blizzard flavor treat absolutely free with a super value meal of your choice, including grilled chicken or ultimate homestyle burger, along with fries and a soft drink. Talk about super. For hot eats, cool treats, think DQ. To help with your Christmas shopping this Saturday and Sunday, almost anything that fits into this Eden's bag is 25% off. And if it doesn't fit, it's 15% off. Merry Christmas from Eaton's. And coming up tomorrow, we're doing a lighter show. We're talking about Christmas shopping. And then Friday, with UNICEF, we're participating in the International Children's Day of Broadcasting. That is going to be interesting. 
hunger and poverty next week, and also a special program on frustrations with access to children over the Christmas period. And uh, yeah, you can imagine what we're going to hear about on there. Uh, just before we go to the phones, you have an event coming up tomorrow we need to know about. Yes, tomorrow we're holding a memorial at the um, Parliament buildings, and uh, the public is invited, and we're going to have a small ceremony, and we're going to um, just honor those that have died from hepatitis C, because unfortunately, when people die as a result of um, complications from hepatitis C, um, there is no record of them dying from hepatitis C because they died from liver failure or other oh, related diseases, okay. not specifically hepatitis C. And we so like to address the issue that um, okay. that's uh, how people are dying. And that's at 11 a.m.? That's at 11 a.m. So in people front can just of go. the ledge steps. Okay. And, uh, and Dr. Peck, you have a 1-800 number that we're going to show people right now. And right. what is it that they can get at this number? Then you should know it's coming up uh, there. Okay. This is a hepatitis C hotline at the BC Centre of Disease Control and uh, you'll find there's a, a number of numbers that you call but if you wait you can talk to a nurse between the hours of 12.30 and 4 o'clock. Okay, uh, now it, is it 1-800 or one triple eight? One triple eight. Okay, it's one triple eight. It's one triple eight seven seven zero four eight zero zero. So just write down the one triple eight seven seven zero four eight zero zero, and the Vancouver phone number is six six zero zero nine nine nine. Okay, and they can get all kinds of information there as well. Okay, that's good. Now, let's see if we can talk to a few more people. I will talk to Joan. Joan, you're in Vancouver, is that, or Joanne? In it's Vancouver. Joanne in Vancouver. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, there's one issue that no one seems to have brought out at all in this whole uh, Trevor case. Right. Is that, um, like, I have a condition called thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. Oh, well, I'm glad I don't have to repeat that. Yeah, well, just call it TTP. Thrombotic. So right. Since so. 1990, I've had 51 plasma transfusions. Wow. Um, using about 20 units of plasma each time. Okay. And each time, I knew the risk. If I didn't get the treatment, I would be dead in less than a week. Wow. Plain, simple. Stroke, heart blowing up, whatever. <sighs> but if I took the transfusions, I would be taking the chance of possibly contacting right. a transfusion-induced disease. Right. So what do I do? I guess you take the chance. You take the chance. Okay. So you know either it's automatic death instantly or you're going to have to live with something else and hope in 10, 15, 5 years, whatever it takes, right. that there will be a cure or a treatment or some help. Okay. And another issue is the government doesn't care about people with rare diseases. Okay. Plain and simple. I have the proof that I've been trying for five years to help people with rare diseases, right. get the information, get a support group, get a disease buddy, mm -hmm. and not one government official, federally or provincially, yeah. will even return my calls. Okay, I'm going to let Leslie respond to that because you had a strong yeah, The response. thing that, that I have found out, and this is, is obviously through our own personal experiences, we didn't want transfused blood. We didn't want Red Cross, Red Cross donor blood in 1988 when Jared was having his surgery, simply because HIV was in the blood system. And I mean, what was worse, him dying very quickly from the heart problem or him dying very slowly and painfully right. getting transfused with HIV? Now, supposedly they had cleaned up the blood, but what we were told and assured by BC Children's Hospital is our blood is screened when we said we wanted to donate the blood for his surgery, they told us that there was far more risk. We as a family would infect this child with an infectious disease that would harm him than their blood would. And, and I understand people that, that have a life-threatening disease that have to rely on it, right. but it, not everybody does. There's autologous donations. There's you know, directed donations. Right. We can do things like that where I know where I've been and I'm certainly not going to put my child's health at risk simply because I'm going to make sure that he gets the disease I've got. I'm not okay. going to give him my blood if they've got a disease. Okay, let's try to take a last call. We're going to talk to Bobby now in Langley. Hi, Bobby. Oh, hi, hi. Judy. It's uh, Bobby Bauer. Um, um, I'd like to applaud the panel for uh, what they're doing to uh, fight this. My daughter died of HB in 1989 and I'm the mom that fought the cause for getting our kids vaccinated in school. Right. My comment today is, because I don't have much time, is I'm really ashamed of our, not so much our provincial government, because um, 
they have done everything they can uh, up to date to get uh, hepatitis B in, in the school program. Right. What they haven't done is apprise the nation that we need to all be in, uh, have our vaccines to save our lives because it is a, it's sexually contracted. Okay. And also, too, if there was the two needles on the beach, one of AIDS and one with HB, the virus would be alive in three to four years, where the AIDS virus would be dead in three hours. Um, I, I applaud uh, what they're doing, but I encourage all British Columbians to fight our governments, to force them into being accountable okay. for our health, because they knew that th these diseases were cropping coming into our society. Okay, I, I'm sorry, Bobby, I'm really sorry, but I want Dr. Peck to respond to you, so I have to cut you off there. But uh, mm. two very hard-hitting comments about the government. Well, I'd like to thank Bob, Bobby very much for her call because she's been a very strong advocate for the hepatitis B vaccine, as we have in the public health community, I may say. And uh, it's now being considered to be given back to uh, newborn, as they have in some places. All children from grade six onwards have had it. And, and in fact, this year, we find that all kids up to grade 12 have had hepatitis B vaccine. Okay. Now the question of whether it needs to be extended beyond that as a universal program uh, has not really come to us. And now. that might be something but, that But certainly if somebody gets a needle stick injury, they can get the uh, immune globulin and the vaccine uh, right away. Okay, we're out of time. I want to thank all of you for joining us. It was once again very informative and I hope very useful for the viewers. And we're going to show you, there you are, hepatitis C hotline. That is the correct number, one 770 or 604-660-0999. And at that, there will be a nurse available, you said from 2.30 to 4.30, is that correct? Uh, from 12.30 to 4 o'clock, Monday to Friday. 4 o'clock, great. Okay, and uh, so we'll be back after a quick break. Sweetie, how's LA? <laughs> yeah, they took that there. Yeah, the place is looking fine. Pretty empty though. Any chance we could hop on a plane? Be here for Christmas? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I miss you too. Uh, there's someone at the door. The Tetley tea folk keep making sure they're as fit as they can be to keep making Tetley Canada's favorite cup of tea. It's up to God to count perforations. Better not miss even one. It's taste exercises and obstacle races. And knowing around tea bag from 40 paces. So if you ever stop and wonder why Tetley tea is best, it's because when it comes to taste, Tetley tea folk never... Fidalgo's is your accessory and home decorating store for all seasons. And now, with the holidays just around the corner, Fidalgo's has the most spectacular selection of decor and accent pieces for every room in your home, for yourself or for a gift. And whatever the season, you'll find that perfect item at Fidalgo's. Fidalgo's very distinctive accents. Fidalgo's in Coquitlam in the Sunwood Square on the Lougheed Highway, in Peninsula Village on 24th Avenue in White Rock, and in Park Royal South, West Vancouver. At one and a half, he started to slow down. At two, he was diagnosed. The next six months were pretty rough. But with a lot of help, we got through it. Please support BC's Children's Hospital. Your donations are measured in more than just dollars. This is the time of year when we start to think about Christmas shopping, or maybe some of you are already finished. But it's also a time when local retailers are competing with large chains. And sometimes they have a very hard time catching our attention. We'll be presenting some local retailers to you tomorrow. And today we revisited the subject of hepatitis C. Now for those of you who may be in areas outside of Victoria or Vancouver, if you want to contact the Hepatitis C Society of Canada Victoria chapter, they'll let you know about your local association. It's 1611 Quadra Street, Victoria, BC, VAW 2L5. You can phone them at 250-388. Oop, lost it. Okay. And the Hepatitis C Society of Canada is there as well. 1-800-652-HEP-C. I hope that this program has been helpful for you and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.